Hey guys, one last video on the light skip before we close up shop on this and move on. I know there's a lot of comments and controversies surrounding the skip's layout, and so this video is really to interact with you guys, the audience. If you want the short version, it's pretty much if a bass boat and a kayak got together in promiscuous acts and bore offspring. This would probably be the end result. But where does a hybrid boat like this fit in the scheme? Can it go offshore? How stable is it for two people? Is it priced too high? Why pay this much for a giant piece of plastic? How does it compare to kayaks? How does it compare to actual skips or boats? Is it even one of those things at all? Well, with the exception of finding a good storm with big chop that I could potentially die in, I tested it among varying conditions to give you the most accurate layout of how versatile the boat is, what purpose I think it's best suited for, and whether or not that purpose is suitable for you. So we directly compare this thing to all small watercraft its size and weigh the pros and cons of all. We've already showed you what this boat can do on big lakes. Let's take it to a more remote location that's harder to get into and really where small boats run the show. So let's talk about portability first. Many people view kayaks as the ultimate little portable boat. And then if you're really gonna get anything else, you should just get a bass boat. This might actually be the most prevalent comment that I get in my videos. So where does it stack up for the term of portability? Well, it's definitely not gonna beat the light sub hundred pound kayak that you can get from Walmart, just throw on the top of your compact car. But when you compare it to the large flagship fishing kayaks, those are not much more portable than this. But people have those fishing kayaks the same reason most people will end up choosing this skiff. They both fish way better and are generally safer to operate out of. So they'll put up with a less portable but still portable aspect of the watercraft in return for a much safer and overall better quality experience on the water. Please understand, if it weren't for the quality experience on the craft itself, then the small, light, portable kayaks would just own the show and nobody would ever buy something like this. But it does, and they do. There's also the aspect of offshore. This gets thrown in my face a lot for John Boats and now just recently for the light skiff. So my thoughts on going offshore in a kayak are not terribly high. I mean, for I think so many reasons, it's just not a good bragging point. I mean, half the offshore videos of kayaks when you look on YouTube are like this, or them talking about how to flip your boat when it rolls over. That crosses over to me more like a, just because you can doesn't mean you should sort of ordeal going there, kind of like, the guys that get dragged miles and miles out to sea and have to be rescued by the Coast Guard. And their argument is, well, the kayak can actually navigate through the waves and the chop better than a John boat, which would be suicide out there. I agree, taking a John boat out there is not a good idea, and taking a kayak out there is also obviously not a good idea. If you don't get owned by waves, you get owned by nature. You just don't win in a, a craft that's like 12 to 14 foot long. So now that we debunk that nonsense, what are the large flagship fishing kayaks like this actually good for? What is it? Do they fish better? Are they cheaper? Well, not really any cheaper, considering the light skip comes in at 3,500, and I almost paid just that much for this watercraft, which is actually pretty nice, but not near as capable. Although I will say there is an aspect of just sitting there in a seat and having everything in our arm's reach so you don't have to move very much, and they are obviously more comfortable because they have a seat that you're supposed to sit in most of the time. Although, if you ever have to go to the back or front of the boat for any reason, definitely taking a risk. It seems to me, every eye cast, that the more these large fishing kayaks evolve, the more they try to become like boats. And that's the last gimmick they have left. They've had a really good run because nothing has been out there to really challenge them up until now. Will the large fishing kayak ever die? Let's be honest, probably not. But there will be a significant decline in the future. At least that's what I'm predicting. Holding on the thought that kayaks wanted to be more like boats, I went along that same notion, but reverse. I tried to make a portable bass boat the general size of a kayak that was light enough to be portable. The end result was this. Think of the light skiff, all aluminum, but with way more bells and whistles and accessories inside of it. It truly was a mini portable bass boat. With the exception of a steering console, this boat had everything. It was all that you could ever hope for if you were a tackle junkie. But it was a little on the heavy side. I think at dry weight, it weighed just about as much as the light skiff, maybe a little more. But once you got used to the stability factor, it was really fun to fish off of. Most of the portability perks of a large kayak, but with so much more going into it. But the kayaker said, it'll never take off because it's too hard to build and nobody will want to do it. It's not that bad. <laughs> All 
All right, so maybe it was a little hard to build. It's an unrealistic amount of energy for most people to go through. We did try to design a production model of this for the mainstream as an aluminum boat, but it just could not be done per USCG standards, and anybody still want to buy it. So we were kind of just wondering when somebody would take this idea and actually make one for the mainstream that would work. Took a little bit of time to hit the US, but the light skiff finally came here. And it follows the same principles that I built that Jumbo with, the max efficiency layout, where you're mostly standing and fishing and very little time sitting. When you do sit, you sit in the cockpit and you motor to each place and you do your thing. Sitting while fishing is, I guess, okay for some sport fish, but for bass fishing and lure fishing in general, it's so much better just to stand like this. Plus at 12.8 feet, this is about as stable as a 1436 John boat. And the draft is much shallower than that of the other boat that I just showed you. The draft is truly comparable to that of kayaks. Plus, you can stick two people on it and it's barely anything less. I'll tell you what, you ain't doing this on a 1232 John boat, not even really a 1236. You can do it better, but you'll still struggle. It would take a 1436, which is actually a bigger boat than this skiff, to get the same or similar results. And in terms of motor ability, most small John boats are rated for a 2.5 to 6 horse, and you can bump it up higher, but it's really super unsafe, and the hulls are really not meant to plane to begin with. But this one, this one is meant to plane. This one can take it. You stick a 15 back there, and the back of the boat barely drifts. If I stuck that 15 on the back of that John boat, the thing would have sank. There are a few comments out there saying, hey, just get a pond prowler or one of these little plastic catamaran boats. You can get one for a third of the price and they're more portable and way better. In all honesty, at stock, they're really not that bad. But how modifiable are they? I mean, they're just two pieces of cheap plastic stuck together around foam to make a fairly stable platform for two people in a short space. But we did mod two, one conservative and then one over the top. This one came out as my new favorite little portable boat. I thought it was actually unstoppable. I didn't think anything could beat it. At 10 foot, this thing was more stable than the 1436 John boat. And then even after building it up, it still wasn't the lightest thing, but it handled very well on the water. And as far as portability, I went through extensive measures to get these two boats in the toy hauler, but this one fit way better. Actually did exceptionally well. But it was really only meant for small bodies of water. That's what I built it for, truly. So it wasn't really capable of going too much farther out on big lakes, and it was fairly miserable. You can't put a very high outboard on it. I mean, the thing is two pieces of plastic and not a very strong transom. So you're going to get, what, a whopping four to five miles an hour, depending on the outboard you put in the back. With the same outboard, it actually goes slower than that jumbo we just showed you, and you can't put anything bigger on there because this hull is definitely not meant to plane. It'll explode. The storage was more shallow than the jumbo because, while well, it was a catamaran hull in the middle is not very deep. For a tall person, this would be miserable. I actually had to make those pontoons and get all that foam and turn those into lockers. After all the modifications, I did actually like this boat better than my John boat. Not because it outstored it, but because at 10 feet, it was still more stable than the other thing was at 12 feet. Also, I had more skill when I built this thing, so it was just simply better than the other one. But little did I know, this boat was about to meet its match. The prom prowler was deceivingly heavy at 138 pounds, this thing being at 170 roughly, it's not that much heavier, and a whole lot more boat. It's also one thick, single-piece, roto-molded hull, much like a higher-end kayak is, so you can add dollies and things like this, and it makes it so much better to actually move around. But let's talk about the factor that I really like most about this boat. All the internal pre-molded buildup and accessories because it's really hard to actually do these things in an aluminum boat or in the plastic palm probably you saw. This thing has four major storage hatches, three of which are completely dry, a self-bailing deck, grooves to go out to the scupper holes, three day boxes, five T-tracks, even a bungee holder for an oar. The back storage is monstrous, it'll hold anything you want back there. And though it doesn't have any rod lockers, it's got vertical rod storage throughout the boat with the main grouping in the back. And other molded and accessory ports like this throughout the front and back that really make this boat exceptional. That was a lot of money and a lot of time, and it was way over the budget of what Mr. Marsh here is proposing. Shout out to Randy, by the way. But to get a small aluminum boat and put the same amount of accessories would be very, very hard for that budget in today's economic time. Before 2020, you might have had a chance, and even then it would be hard. Today, not possible to build this boat for cheaper DIY. I've tried, trust me. To build a stock boat with this many accessories that will last, you're looking more around 5K. And that's not taking into account all the tremendous time you will waste building it. 
And as far as the seat, I don't know. There was really weird comments. People advocating for John boats that have three really uncomfortable bench seats, but then commenting that this boat absolutely needed a seat. So I don't know. I, I look at it like if I was in a John boat, I'm already sitting on bench seats. So I don't really personally care. I'm standing up most of the time. But for people who need seats, check out this guy, um, Fishaholic Fishing. He has a video on the light skiff and he actually installed a seat right there in the back. So pretty much all you'd have to do is just figure out the seat of your choice and then bolt it through and have a backing plate underneath and you can have your seat. If you really, really need one, it's totally possible. You can also run graphs, lighting, electronics, whatever you want, it's totally doable. There's points where you can just tie the wires right in. And I gotta remind you guys, for those of you who already know and for those that don't, I'm a John Boat to Bass Boat conversion guy. That's how this channel was founded and that's what we still continue to do. It's just this very odd once that I have a product in my possession that I like so much that I'm advocating for it this hard. This product has the true potential to change everything. That's a big one, huh? Shoot, that's a huge one. What'd you, what happened? Wow, I think that was a rock. Nah, we'll say it's fish. You did what you could. Yeah. Oh, that was a fish. No way, dude. You want to try the crank? Yeah. Dude, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Ice cream. Ice cream. It's hooked up in the worst spots. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, this comment is the most frequent one I ever get. And I'm telling you guys, if portability is not a factor like this, then yeah, go get a bass boat. But you're lying to yourself if you think you can go get a bass boat and do what I just did with this boat. I just launched that thing out of my truck bed into the lake, and then I'm gonna recover it and do the exact same thing. There's only select few watercraft that can ever actually do this. And it's not a used bass boat, or even a standard used aluminum boat. It is a very specific, niche and it's something that needs to change the fact that a bass boat is the most herald thing you can actually have in prestige of fishing is laughable now this isn't 1998 there isn't only four fishing channels out there there's tons in fact the entire bass fishing industry got usurped by kids who posted fishing videos every day that just shows you how much actual credibility that the bass fishing tournament industry actually had because when independent media hit the scene people could actually choose what they could watch and nobody wanted to watch you you can continue on with this delusional sense of relevance but nobody else actually thinks you're worth it nobody wants to see you out there dressed like you're about to go golf with a pink sun visor cutting off people in fishing spots because you're desperate to win some bag calling people brokies because they don't want to buy some giant money pit worth of a boat. You're a specific niche realm of fishing and your realm is very small and you've been on your way out for a while. So go gracefully. Show some freaking dignity. Anyways, that's my piece, guys. Do what you want. Because I sure know we will. See you out there.